session on a Saturday, on a Saturday morning. I am uh, Barbara Rao. Uh, I am a dermatologist in New York, New Jersey area. And uh, the lecture today is one of the series in, in a merit research section, where basically our ultimate goal is to um, have a resource guide or a white paper available for anybody doing research in Pakistan student or a faculty. And then they should be able to go to a resource uh, area, like where should they look for a clinical trial? How should they conduct the study? How should the study be conducted? What are the resources inside and outside the country? So this series, uh, this lecture is part of that series. And also this is a CME program. So um, you can claim a CME if you attend the session, there is a way to do that. You can go uh, out at our merit site and claim that. Also, it is sponsored by, obviously, by APNA and our uh, CME RISA committee. Uh, they sponsor this, so thank you to them, and we are APNA anyway. Um, with that, uh, I will go to introduce our speaker today, who is, I just found out, I was impressed by his CV, but not, I'm even more impressed that he's from RMU or RMC, uh, about 13 years later than me, graduation-wise. So. So Faz Anwar, he's, he's an oncologist in Cleveland Clinic, uh, which you all know is a most prestigious, one of the most prestigious place in the country and outside the country. And his specialty is hematology, oncology, and then especially in uh, multiple myeloma and related disorders, where he does clinical research and basic research. And, uh, and, and basically we want to learn from him for the audience that uh, what is he doing, how is he doing and how he can help and what is he doing in Pakistan and how can uh, he guide and help our younger students and uh, faculty to get involved with the research. So with that, uh, we will uh, let him uh, talk for 40, 40 minutes or so. And then there'll be question answers in between. If you guys have questions, uh, which are uh, you want to ask, you can put it here in the question box or you can raise hand to ask a question. And we will try to uh, try to respond. With me in the panel, we also have Dr. Fried Suri. Uh, uh, he's uh, uh, he will be also uh, be helping with me in conducting the session. And then I'm lucky enough now, just now, Professor, our Vice Chancellor for RMU, uh, Dr. Umar, who's visiting United States for APNA and other family reasons. He also joined when I told him like the speaker today is from RMU and he was kind enough to join and uh, we'll get his comment in between. But with, with that, um, uh, Faz, uh, please get started. Dr. Umar, you want to say a word to welcome him? You, you are mute, Dr. Umar. So if you unmute. Uh, Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Babar, for the invitation. And uh, it is always a privilege uh, and honor. And yeah, I'm really humbled to be the part of this session. And uh, very nice to see uh, Faiz Anwar here. Uh, so <laughs> congratulations, Faiz. I heard a lot about you. So uh, I think it is a great opportunity that I am the uh, part of this uh, noble mission and this webinar. Inshallah, we'll continue in the collaboration in future. So very warm welcome. And uh, thank you, everybody, for giving me the opportunity. Dr. Free, do you want to say a word or so? Dr. Suri? Okay. He may yes. be... Gee, go Sorry, ahead. I was muting. <laughs> Sorry. That's all. That's yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I have uh, heard from Dr. Faz Anwar before and very impressed by him. I think today's lecture will be very useful and informative for, uh, especially for the new students and those who are seeking residency. Thank you, Dr. Uh, Barbara. And uh, Danish and Shahid are here. You guys want to say uh, welcome words quickly? Welcome. Um, yeah. Delighted to have Dr. Faiz Anwar here. Looking forward to hearing from him. Shahid? Ji, I, I just want to say, in addition to welcoming warmly um, Faiz Anwar, that um, I think we, including my own practice, which is growing, and we are having students from Pakistan um, coming for residency, and uh, I already have two. Uh, people that I'm helping in. I think within within United States also, we would need uh, Dr. Kazanwar's help. Then they come from Pakistan and uh, in the process of residency, how they can start a, a small research project 
project um, that they can um, you know learn as well as um, help them in their journey for residency of course like dr umar said rmu is coming up as a hub for a research in pakistan and we um, collaborating very closely with dr umar so okay. that that part is there so thank you all right uh, so faz you are on take it and educate us Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. So thank you so much for the kind introduction, and I am so very surprised, and uh, I'm I'm very happy that Dr. Omar is joining. Uh, we go back uh, when I did my FCPS in medicine, and Dr. Omar was my supervisor. So this is uh, really a special opportunity for me. So thank you so much for that. Uh, my name is Faiz, Faiz Anwar. Uh, I know once you read the, the spelling, you can spell it, you can call it Faiz or Faiz, but my name is Faiz, so thank you. Uh, I do not have any conflict of interest with this presentation. So this is the um, rough roadmap of my presentation. Um, and this is introduction to a process. And I think that's why intent is to uh, invite you guys to join us in the process. So the contents include why publish um, and what are the components of a balanced academic portfolio that will be mostly for the junior people, students and resident. And then we did a survey of the students. So I will share some slide and that may be educational for most of us uh, who have not seen this slide before. What are the barriers to publication? And briefly, what's the role of mentoring and the type of publications and scholarly activities our students and young trainees can start with? Uh, and what are the predictors of their productivity if they want to participate? I will have some examples to share. Uh, I've been doing this for now 10 years since I became a faculty. Uh, and then uh, I have some resources just to touch about motivation and mentoring. And we have developed a mini curriculum, mostly for the scholarly publication. So that's some training resources I'm going to share. And I truly believe that excellence is a process. And if you are on the process, sky is the limit. So how big is the scope? I was just Googling uh, how many students are in Pakistan. And I found this resource from 2019. And according to this, almost 150,000 students appear in the entry test. And out of those, 15,000 will get admission in more than 100 public and private sector med medical colleges in Pakistan. So if we can perfect the process of mentoring, if we get it right, we get to serve and help a very large number of very highly talented individuals in Pakistan. So a medical student may ask, you know, why bother publishing? And for that particular student, my answer is that if you want to learn at a higher level, you have to publish. Um, you need to get involved in the innovation and research and then ultimately publish it if you have any desire to change the world, if you want to prevent the disease, if you want to control diseases better, or if you ultimately find cures for the disease, you have to get involved into innovation research and publishing. If you want to provide the best care to my family, to your family, to provide that high quality care, you have to involve in publishing and scholarly activities. If you want to serve at with excellence at your local level, regional level, national level, at a global level, it's only possible if you get involved in publishing. And if you want, if you have ambitions, big dreams, uh, you want to go into higher education, these days residency is here in the United States and I'm sure everywhere else, residency is a fellowship for very competitive. So you need to have a strong portfolio. Um, and it is um, becoming more and more a requirement for your job. If you have a dream job in mind, you cannot succeed in getting that job without publishing. It is now required for promotion and tenure. People here in the US are very well familiar about that. And we know the, in our academic environment here, either you publish or perish, so you make a choice. So what we have done in the last 10 or so years, uh, we got involved in some uh, pre-residency students training um, and help them achieve academic success. Uh, I have uh, published with more than 200 people who are now resident within the USA. Uh, 35 of uh, those people 
who worked with us and published with us, they are now into fellowships. And my specialty is hemonc, so most of these guys in hematology oncology. And we now currently in this group are loosely working with about 600 students on different groups and try to help them. And our um, research and publication focus been around either therapeutics, drug development, malignant hematology management, uh, to learn more about the disease biology, drug resistance, immunotherapy, cellular therapy, stem cell transplantation, and explore novel targets. And uh, my personal focus is mentoring for academic success for these students. So when I was a medical student, uh, this is what I was looking at my portfolio. And I was thinking if I'm in a medical school and working hard, if, if I'm scoring good and getting A grades, uh, I'm doing really good. And if uh, I, at the same time, uh, get a good, rich clinical experience, my portfolio is strong and balanced. But years later, I realized that this is very incomplete view of anybody who wants to be a comprehensive, good, educated physician. So then I realized what is missing. And there I can show you what were my blind spots. So I was completely missing the importance of publication and scholarly activities. I was missing that I need to not only get educated, I need to get involved in teaching, I need to involve in volunteering, and it is important to have uh, some hobbies. Uh, you need to be a good fit within any team and you need to be a team player, you need to collaborate. You, you cannot just win by working alone. And, and if you have leadership qualities, that will give you extra credit to be more successful. Now I go back to the previous slide and if I want to score on any scoring system uh, where they are selecting people for a job or for the training, then I'm going to only get scores on these three categories. But if I'm aware and I'm, my portfolio is balanced and then I am putting an extra effort on all these areas which many people have as a blind spot, then of course, at the end of the interview, at the end of the evaluation, my scoring sheet will tell a completely different story. So this is where you need to have a balanced portfolio to be successful as a young physician. So how to do that now, if you have a definition of success, you have a life agenda. So you start with the foundation and I cannot emphasize more uh, about the uh, importance of honesty, authenticity, and integrity. And then based on those foundations, you need to have a strategy. And the strategy which we know works is your knowledge base, your talent, your attitude, your ambitions, uh, dream big, work hard, work smart, acquire skills, remain humble, and acquire wisdom. And by doing that, then provide the excellent uh, service um, and through that excellent service, you can work on, continue to get educated, continue to publish and get involved in teaching, work as a team player and get involved in research. So this is the survey and I think I want to spend maybe two minutes on this slide. Um, I have a group of uh, students from Pakistan, they are on a WhatsApp group and we asked them you know, you are involved in the group and many are now publishing. So what was missing in your training or skill level that you guys were not able to publish without, before you join us? And they gave us some answers. We clumped those answers into different categories and we send them the questionnaire back and we said, now we have clumped your answers into 10 different categories. Why don't you rank these categories uh, based on your perception of importance. So rank number one category will be the more important thing. And rank number 10 will be kind of least important on the list. There's no denial. We have exceptionally good teachers back home. And I am one of the end product of those teachers uh, and got directly benefit from that. But what students came back and they said they, they, they have, um, a severe lack of inspiring road models. Uh, they truly have good teachers, but they don't have good mentors. And they feel that for scholarly activities, there is no nurturing environment and there is lack of guidance and resources there. Uh, and then said they have uh, inadequate knowledge how to do it. They don't have skill how to publish. Um, 
men came back and they said, there's no online library access. And they maybe this is where APNA can make a difference. This is where APNA can look at the individual colleges and universities and see where we can uh, get access for these students uh, through their comprehensive online libraries. Uh, and many people came back, they said, we have some skills, but there is no dedicated funding stream. There is no systematic approach. No one gives us a reward if we work hard on this. Uh, some people felt that, uh, so these two categories are ranked the same, uh, rank five and six, that was the, there's no uh, teamwork for collaboration. Um, generally, students are overburdened, uh, the trainees are underpaid, and there's a lot of uh, low self-esteem issues, family social burdens. Uh, they are unaware of their own talent. Uh, they are unclear of their professional path, uh, ambitions, they have lack of vision. They, they do not want to take any risk and they are concerned about failure. The rank seven was a kind of similar theme, but lack of nurturing environment. Uh, there's no academic culture to support critical thinking and tolerance for how and why. Um, and that's where as a teacher, as an educator, we need to encourage our students for free thinking and encourage them to ask us in quest questions. Um, and then some people came back that the brain demise is a big issue. Some felt that brain drain may be a problem, but many people said it's a brain demise. There's a lot of talent, but because of lack of mentoring, they feel that we are losing all the talent. And many people, they felt that they, they were not aware that they, they never thought about our life agenda, their goal, their success, how to define uh, a lifelong learning and excellence. And many people, especially females uh, and younger females, when they get married, there's a lot of social pressure, uh, there's lack of family support that they cannot really pursue their higher education. So if a young scholar come, we tell them what we cannot change. We will not be able to change whatever score they got before going into the mentoring program. Uh, good scores are important. We cannot really change the year of graduation. Fresh graduates in general are preferred. International medical graduate from good reputable medical colleges may have a good sound background in training, clinical skills, their alumni support is better, and they have better educational resources. And so we cannot truly change all these uh, things which happened in the past, but what we can change is still a lot. We can change a person's mindset. We can tell them to look at the life agenda and aim higher, be more confident. And we do that by giving them skills. We remove their blind spot. We tell them to be more ethical, uh, have uh, integrity in their day-to-day -day, uh, meeting, uh, punctuality, skill building for scholarly activities and work as a team player. As a medical student, uh, when we were competing to make the merit and competing to get the you know, higher numbers, we were competing individually. The scholarly activities, you have to work uh, in a team environment. And then by doing all these things, we help them publish and there are different type of publication that can be done. Um, and then we, we tell them, if you acquire a skill, why don't you teach? And you can teach this uh, small group of five people or 10 people and write that in your portfolio. And that will help you become better teacher, better communicator. And this is all trickle down. This all trickles down into your portfolio. And then there has to be a meaningful change in your CV, in your portfolio before the mentoring program and after the mentoring program which may take somewhere between six months to a year because that's how much time you need really to start seeing your projects getting published. And all this trickles down into your personal statement and your job application becomes stronger. We can guide you how to improve your statement and letter. We can help you with the language edits and content edits. And it's typically done by a senior persons trying to help a junior colleague or a resident who is already into residency can look at the application of somebody who's applying for residency. And peers have the opportunity to help each other and prepare for the interviews and guidance on the interview process and application process. And now with all that portfolio, you go to somebody and you'd show them your CV and you say, please write me a letter of recommendation. You are not going to get a weak letter of recommendation. You're going to get a strong letter of recommendation. 
So for an example, throughout this process, I worked with about 30 students back in 2018. And uh, Alhamdulillah, uh, that all 30 out of 30 are doing now internal medicine or other residencies in the USA. So that 100% result came from their hard work, their ambition, and their effort. Uh, but I can tell you that mentoring can make a huge difference. And there are some people for other visa reasons or whatever, they are uh, unable to apply right away for fellowship. So we encourage them to look into yes, doing a part-time MPH, a master's degree, get ready for the fellowship uh, and look for a part-time research job. And if they can, they should consider maybe a part-time PhD to continue to improve your portfolio. And for the medical students, so what type of easy publications which can be done in the beginning, I say start with a single case report or maybe an image report. And if you have more mature uh, understanding about a subject, start with just writing a letter to the editor. And if you have access to few cases, start with the case series. Uh, you can also write a focused review. Uh, you can also do a systematic review. And if you know how to handle the data, you can do a meta-analysis. Uh, if you have access to data back home, uh, you can do a retrospective review. Uh, prospective trials are generally take longer time, higher quality, but it's probably more suitable for somebody who's starting as a junior faculty. And if they can, they should spend some time, even a month, uh, into a basic like basic science lab and try to see how to do different laboratory techniques. This is my personal perception, and I tell my student: if you want to be if you want to be highly productivity, you need to have a focus. You need to have self drive. You need to have dedication. You need to give and seek for feedback. And that's where we, we really lack in that aspect. I have to beg my students to give me feedback on a weekly basis. If they came to me and we gave them a project and they just disappear in a vacuum, you never hear back from. But those people who tell you every week that you know, we have made a progress, um, they are the one who will have more papers and more productivity. Work as a group and build your skills. Without that, there's no productivity. So a few examples I'm sharing, just a simple case got published in a Nature's Journal in the bone marrow transplantation. I'm not going to spend too much time on these examples. This is an other example of a publication which got published in the American Society of Bone Marrow Transplant Journal. This is one of the leading North American journals for the American Society of Bone Marrow Transplant. Now we call it uh, Transplant and Cellular Therapy Society. And the first uh, uh, author, Avaz Ijaz, is a graduate from uh, Rawalpindi Medical College. Uh, Ali Yunus Khan is a graduate from Shifa College. Spadullah is a graduate from Army Medical College, Warda Army Medical College, Asad Faraz, uh, Rawalpindi Medical College. So this is just an example of all these people coming together, working together, and publishing in the leading journals in the world. As another example, uh, you know, anything very simple, you know, prophylaxis of a hepatitis B after the stem cell transplant in the era of drug resistance, and, and a lot of students who got involved, and many are now faculty. Irbaz is now a Mayo faculty, hematology oncology, and a Mayo fellow, doing two additional master's degrees uh, in Harvard. Uh, similarly, I have uh, success stories for all these names. Uh, this was a recent publication in JAMA. We came up with a letter to the editor. Uh, we analyzed the data on the carfilzomib-based chemotherapy, and we concluded that there are some pluses and minuses, so all that glitter is not gold. And Zonera is uh, from RMC. Uh, she's part of the co-author list, and she started working with us before she went into residency. Uh, this is uh, just to tell the, um, the primary and the secondary literature and the hierarchy or importance of the data or the research and uh, innovation and how the, what is the weightage of the evidence. 
So I will spend maybe a couple of minutes here. Uh, this is for the medical students. Um, and I want to explain um, the anatomy of an article, how somebody who just picks up a journal and reads it, and then I am trying to help somebody publish how we look at it differently. So on the left hand, you get a published article, you read there's a title, there are authors, there are disclosure information, there is a corresponding author, they have an address, a mail, email address there. Then it starts with an abstract, an introduction, it has a description about methodology. They talked about results. They sometimes give results in tables and figures. They have a nice discussion, four or five paragraphs, and then they give references. When someone comes and say, I want to write a good review on the management of X, Y, and Z, we start with the idea. We say, let's convert this idea into hypothesis. Let's convert this hypothesis into a title. And then we try to gather a team around it. And that may take us uh, you know, somewhere between one to two weeks. And once we have the hypothesis and we know our focus, then we uh, initiate a search. So let's assume that this is sort of a, a, a high quality review paper you want to write. So you start with the research on the library resources. You define your methodology, you collect your references. And then you select the article you want to finally include in your data selection. And then you extract data from those articles into tables. Those tables are converted into results. And when we do that, we have the ability to now initially present our initial results in any relevant meeting. So this process within one to three months, you can have an abstract ready which you can present. And then as time go by, uh, you start writing your introduction, you start developing your discussion portion, you start developing your figures and legends, um, and then you write a letter to the editor, you select the journal, you make final edits, and you submit it. And that may take an additional three, three months. So total process up to this point is probably six months when you submit. And after submission, it may take an additional three to six months before it can get reviewed and published. And many times the reviewers come back, they say it's not good. Sometimes they say it's good, but you need minor or major edits. Um, and when it gets published, you have to do proofreads and you, you, you work with the publisher forms. So this entire process may take up to a year before you can publish one paper. So many a time students say, you know, I'm working with you for two weeks and I have not seen any progress. You're right, it's not going to be any different in two weeks. In two weeks, we'll be lucky if you can develop some basic skills. So you need to plan ahead. If you want to apply for the interview by the end of uh, next year, you need to start working today. So the process is start with an idea, and I showed a paper where we talked about graft versus host disease in the setting of checkpoint inhibitors. And many people, they were reporting that the graft versus host disease happened in patients who were previously exposed to checkpoint inhibitors and if they went through an allergenic transplantation. And we felt that there is no prospective trial, there is no big data out there. So if we look at the individual evidence, which is scattered here and there, we may be able to make sense of the data. That's what we did. We quantitatively measured the risk and tried to define patients who are at a high risk and low risk to save lives, to improve care, to help uh, people who are actually dealing with these problems. And then with that, we came up with the recommendation. And so this is the educational component, discovery component we want to highlight through any, through any project. And this is where the role of a mentor comes in. If uh, we say, you know, student do all the work and publish, that's not going to happen. This is just an example. You know, someone writes a paragraph and send it to me uh, or send it to another colleague. I can do either track changes electronically, or if I'm busy, I print it out and keep it with me. And whenever I'm traveling, I have time, I can uh, hand write and correct. So this is where we need mentors. This is uh, where you know, we cannot really say students need to do all its own. They need to work with a disease expert, a specialist, and that's where most of the time is consumed. Uh, but that's where the most reward is. So I have some examples to share with our collaborations. Uh, 
from uh, Pakistan, where the data was from Pakistan. So we have a fantastic uh, Armed Forces Institute of Bone Marrow Transplant taken. They have a wonderful team there. So we collaborate with them and publish some of their data. They are actually the leader in the world on management of uh, aplastic anemia, uh, especially in that part of the world. You cannot really use data from New York and London and say you are going to treat your patients uh, based on that data and provide them the best care in Lahore, Karachi, or Islamabad. You need to look at your own challenges and you need to have your own data to provide the best care for those, for those patients. So this is another example with the same group. Um, in in uh, rare disorders, uh, they, they published their single center experience from Pakistan. And this is a list of the hematology related uh, meetings where we can submit abstracts. Uh, once we have the data available, we can convert it to an abstract. So American Society of Hematology, American Society of Clinical Oncology, Transplant Society, European Transplant Society. And similarly, there are other societies for every specialty. You guys know your societies well. So if you want to put a team of students together, what will be the ideal team? Uh, the ideal team should have maybe four or five people in the beginning. Uh, there may be one or two students that are, should be resident and fellows. Uh, so they have a little bit more clinical know-how and experience. Uh, one or two very beginner or junior students, one or two mentors. Uh, they should have access to library and a statistician and the skills just basic skills, you know, type a paragraph in the word, use Excel sheet, uh, start making some tables. They need to learn about database searches, uh, how to make graphs and figures, how to use uh, citation software. Our group uh, predominantly uses EndNote, but you can use any. And you can use many platforms for collaboration where you can put your file together so they're visible to everybody. We typically rely on a Dropbox folder for coordinations. And there are many resources uh, available online where you can find a list of journals uh, based on the impact factor, based on your specialty area, and that's where you pick and choose. Um, and I will suggest, you know, start with an impact factor somewhere between one and five uh, in the beginning. And as you learn more, get more maturity, more knowledge, then you aim for uh, a better impact factor. So I typically share these three YouTube resources or speeches uh, for the motivation. Uh, I, I, I um, invite you guys on this meeting, on this forum to please listen to this. Uh, a good time will be if you have some free time for 20, 30 minutes and you're going out for a walk, just type in these uh, uh, commencement addresses in, uh, in your cell phone in the YouTube and listen to that. The, my most favorite is this, uh, the number three, uh, make your bed speech, which was uh, del delivered by uh, Admiral Williams in, in the commencement address at University of uh, Texas in Austin in 2014. Now, this is a resource, uh, one of a uh, cardiothoracic uh, physician who is an Arkham graduate, is a good friend. He introduced me to this resource. Uh, this is also on YouTube. It's called View from the Top. And it is the lecture series which are given by the world leaders uh, at Stanford Graduate School of Business. And this is a free resource. You can actually have access to 100 plus uh, lectures. Just an example, uh, the Google CEO gave a lecture to the students. Uh, uh, JP Morgan CEO gave a lecture. The Treasury Secretary gave a lecture. Uh, HP uh, CEO gave a lecture. Uh, the, uh, there is an investment firm, uh, Vinod Kosola gave a lecture. These are all free online resources available. This may be more suitable for the faculty and opens up your mind. So give it a try. We have over the years developed some very basic lectures. They're not fancy, but they, they do the trick. They introduce you to the basic concept. We want your help to continue to develop more basic training resources. We were uh, on the APNA forum, we were talking about developing some resources and someone said very rightly that there's no need to reinvent the wheel. 
There are many resources which are already available, so we will utilize that. But if you want to summarize, uh, we can make an effort and summarize resources. So we don't have to give the lecture every week. It's available, new students join in. They just need to spare some time, uh, click the link, listen to the lecture, develop some skills and move on. Uh, this is a very, very basic uh, mini curriculum. These are about resources available on the internet and they are there um, available to anyone. So, and if you want to help us by adding more, improving these resources, we'll be glad to remove uh, a previous resource and upgrade to a better one. So let us know. This was, uh, this was helped and contributed by a team of students who are working with us currently. Similarly, additional resources which are available on the websites. And additional resources um, about the uh, meta-analyses and systematic reviews. Additional resources about study question and hypotheses. So this is what I tell my student. Um, we tell them that we have been publishing uh, one to two piece or article every week for almost three plus years now. And this is their hard work. They are able to do it and collaboratively we continue to publish. Uh, we have directly or indirectly have helped 35 people enter into very, very prestigious fellowships and academic jobs. They are the one with the talent. They are one with the hard work. Uh, we, this process just help them uh, get the advantage of all their unique strengths. And we have now published with more than 200 pre-residency applicants um, and they are pursuing their career in different uh, institutions all over the USA, alhamdulillah. So how the process starts, you know, someone reaches out, uh, they know somebody, they know their friend got benefit from us, they, they, their senior, their junior is working with us, so they send an email, uh, we start with the basic CV review. The student has to agree to be uh, some basic terms and conditions, uh, integrity, work as a team. We add to a WhatsApp group and a Dropbox. It has some training videos, resources. Uh, we start with uh, some idea and our focus need to be clear. Are we talking about through analysis, find some new aspect which is not known before? Or you want to just, uh, educate in a better way about an idea about a process which is already well known. And then we try to gather a team of uh, students around that new idea, mentors facilitate that. Um, and then we, we want mentors to be very, very respectful. Uh, they should encourage junior people. Um, they should support um, and they should give them feedback. And this is a very intense process with the initial manuscript go through multiple revisions. And once it's ready for submission, we select a journal, we write a cover letter, we submit it. And when the reviewers come back, based on the reviewers comment, we address it, we publish, celebrate, alhamdulillah, repeat, move on. And so we have done that for multiple times in the last few years, every week. So what we want from the student, I want only three lines every day. If you can write three lines every day, that means you'll be able to write three paragraphs in 10 days. And you figure it out, how much time will you need to write three lines every day? I encourage my students to read one article about the research project they are doing, read one full article from A to Z every day and continue to build their skill level, read for an extra curriculum, read an extra curriculum book, um, for 10 minutes if possible. That will be equal to one new book in a month, which is not related to medicine, which is not related to curriculum. That will open up your mind, give you more vocabulary, give you more writing skills. Uh, and start by helping your own brother, sister, your wife, uh, you know, start with your own circle of family and friends uh, to teach them, help them publish. And if you have additional time, then start working people on the group and as a group publish and continue to get engaged in the teamwork. And that's where I feel that the success of this program will come from that all these students which are working with us 
ultimately even a fraction come back, share this vision with us and be the mentor for the next uh, you know, 100, 200 people. That's how we are going to improve uh, the mentorship uh, challenge. Uh, and we tell them to just do not uh, put your head down and work hard. We want you to be a leader, take initiative, take control, strive for excellence in education. And many people say, I'm already so busy, I don't have time. So for them, my advice is wake up early, 4 a.m. to 6 a.m., two extra hours daily can make the difference between an ordinary and an extraordinary position. So you, you make your pick. So we recently started the collaborating with the group and I am very humbled and very excited to join the group and effort, but this is not a comprehensive list and please volunteer to join this group as a mentor. And so there is some introductory links for the website. There's uh, some very basic information. Uh, what are the criteria, a minimal criteria for the mentor they need to be uh, you know, some sort of a master's degree or a board certification in their field or an MPhil or a PhD degree, and they should have some track record. So we felt that, you know, at least three publications in PubMed Index Journal will be a good start, either as a first or a lead author. And we, we want help on identifying and developing new resources uh, so we can continue to train these students. I can tell you these students, they are hungry, they are ambitious, they are more talented than, than me and than you. We just need to facilitate them for success. So my personal goal is to achieve uh, improvement in global oncology care by helping at least a thousand students to facilitate in their career and academic growth and scholarly activities on oncology to honor my mother who died with leukemia. So that is my drive and my focus. So, how we want to achieve this uh, goal of mentoring and helping other people, uh, you, you, you get uh, to involved into their mentoring process early on at the pre-residency state and throughout the residency fellowship and junior faculty phase uh, till they become independent. And once they publish with you 20, 30 papers, they are on a successful path to become full professors. If they want to stay in academics, they will be successful. If they want to go into a, a private practice, they will be even more successful. And so we want to inspire students to strive for excellence. We want to help them to achieve their academic excellence, uh, go into better academic residencies, prestigious scholarship, and through that achieve uh, presence in academic jobs because they have strong portfolio, they belong there. Um, and they need to have the physician scholar mindset uh, and that will uh, prepare them to be successful as faculty. And with the new skills, they will be successful mentors and leaders. So in summary, students, we want you to be a leader, take initiative, develop skills. Only you can stop yourself from publishing an academic success. And by doing that, we want you to bring ease, improve care for your patients and serve them with integrity. Uh, your family, patients and society deserve the best. Strive for excellence in education, teaching and learning. Work hard, work with humility, develop wisdom, have a plan. Excellence is a process. It's not a switch on, switch off phenomena. And it's a long journey and there's no limit. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Fires. This was excellent, very much needed. And actually, it's good that Danish uh, and uh, Merit team brought you here because really, I myself supervise students as Danish and they all know I have 21 students now. They are all trying to head to dermatology. And if you don't have an organized uh, structure like you have, it's very difficult to even help them or help yourself because otherwise both of you are lost. And it does take extra time from personal life as I'm aware you are, you are doing that. But you know, some people uh, want to increase their portfolio by having more and more stocks and other people like Fies, they're improving life. So it's up to you, which one do you choose? But having said that, I think there were questions Danish from the audience and there is this guy Adnan writing questions. And I think the answer to all his question is he should join Fies. Uh, 
uh, Danish or me or our Sarvat or our Suri, and we will help you and guide you and take you to next level. But his questions are, are related to difficulties they are having in Pakistan doing research, et cetera. But I think answer is join one of us and your problems will be better. But Danish, do you have any comment or any questions you want to take? Uh, <clears throat> thank you, Dr. Faiz. This is wonderful. Uh, I think you explained um, much of it very simply in, in a straightforward manner. But if I may ask you uh, to repeat a couple of things, uh, Dr. Faiz, if you want to repeat one, how people can reach out to you and join, what's the first step? What do they have to do? step and do they bring in their ideas or you have ideas they can choose from and number two is that what um, problems you're seeing for people who are coming from Pakistan what have been holding them back and and how do you help them overcome those uh, I'm assuming many of them are still in Pakistan when they join your writing groups right so Dr. Danish good question uh, the challenge is if I was able to help all those guys I will continue to do that the challenge is there are so many students now who need help so it has to be a group effort it has to be um, an organizational effort at this point so what was working for us when we could do it uh, on site people used to travel and come and stay in the city where I was and University of Arizona and spent three months there, sit in the library and work on the project. But now we are all remote. I have zero student on site. So we all collaborate through WhatsApp and Dropbox and start with an email. But if someone reaches out to me, I will personally not be able to work with them one-to-one -one at this point. They, we can involve them into the skill building process, but I need help from other people uh, and students need to declare that what is their interest? Do they want neurology? Do they want cardiology? Do they want dermatology? And then we should channel these students towards those mentors who have that specialty. And some of the ideas come from in their training process, when they go through these videos and resources and they start reading abstract from meetings and start reading articles on journals, they will be able to tell that what the good idea is. Sometimes. You know, I am doing some work and I come up with an idea. I have an ideas book on my desk and an idea comes on my mind, I write it. And I encourage you guys should do that too. Um, and then we share that idea. Someone messages, I am looking for a project. I say, I have an idea. Why don't you make a group and develop this idea into a publication? But uh, where we are failing now is uh, the, 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 the number of, trainers are not there. The number of mentors are limited and that's the bottleneck at this point. That's where I need help from their leadership on this forum. Um, and most of this mentorship can be done. We already have very, very good faculty back home. This can be done by just uh, encouraging some faculty back home and they start publishing, their resident will start publishing. Uh, Babar, I think Professor Omar has a comment. Let's uh, invite him. Ji, Dr. Omar. Uh, Bismillah Rahman and Rahim. Thank you very much, Dr. Danish and uh, Dr. Rao, for giving me the opportunity. Thoda sa mein isli ye you ko tod diya ke wo mujhe kahin pe vaccination ke liye jana. My apologies. Otherwise, main kyu main yata. So, ek to I first appreciate uh, Rao and uh, so Faiz ko bhi ki isne bhi isko join kiya aur Dr. Danish they are doing wonderful job. Or is ki jo brick hai jo main aware hoon possibly I may not be aware of the Faiz has been doing because of the communication gap. Ki kiti deir se Rao is pe laga hua tha pe Danish ne join kiya shahid hai. Or now uh, I am very happy ki aapne mujhe bhi isme involve kiya aaj. So, ek to ek, a lot of appreciation and prayers Faiz, for you and the whole team and the wonderful uh, noble mission you are doing. I think this is a great service to not only the individuals or any uh, uh, boy or girl from Pakistan. It is the uh, ser serving the humanity that if you produce the scholars and not only the uh, people who hold degrees, so they bring uh, research and innovation which save human life. So this is the uh, wider mission as a Muslim, as a human being. So I think you are doing a great job. So coming back to the uh, uh, the second thing, uh, uh, Faiz shared a little bit. The first paper uh, Faiz wrote in Pakistan was the uh, 
uh, the fatty liver disease uh, or NEFL uh, in the patient who are non-diabetic and with normal BMI. Uh, possibly, if Faiz has not read it from your CV, se. so this was the first paper he wrote with me. And the idea I brought from America, from the American Society of Endoscopy, uh, sorry, Gastroenterology, because in 1998, uh, this is first time described as a NEFL also a uh, cause of liver disease other than hepatitis B and C. And I always quote that uh, the paper, uh, you know, the first, it is published in uh, the uh, Faculty General of Rawalpindi Medical College at that time because I was the uh, secretary of the general. So, Faiz, you can go back and look into those memories. And we're doing the liver biopsy in front of 131 board when Professor Kauka Bashir was the in charge. I, and then the, uh, he collected all this data from my clinic. So I think the story unfolding is this, that the system do exist, but obviously the system in Pakistan need two things. Being 35 years of my, uh, I have five minutes or four minutes or not? You have two minutes. Two minutes. So okay. uh, system, uh, because we don't evolve the system, usually we are doing the best. Why people do research in America? So this is my first question to Faiz and the rest of the people. They do research, not for research sake. They don't do research for the humanity sake. They research, do research for the career sake. They do research for the good practice to earn money. And this is the truth. So if we evolve a system in Pakistan that uh, for career and to uh, earn money, if you have a, a need to research, people will start doing research. Why uh, the Faiz has done first paper and then he published other 300 in America? because they want to excel. So this is the, uh, what I'm doing in, uh, what we are doing in Pakistan is changing the system. So this is the basic things. This has to be taught to the policy maker, which you are inshallah doing in December, Dr. Shahid Arbi. Two things important in the RMU that we have a model that first you should have a research curriculum. So five one should change the research curriculum of undergraduate and postgraduate research will come there and then the faculty research. So this is a full stop. Then you must have the research unit. You must have research faculty. You must have research journal to publish. If you do not have a journal in Pakistan for the student, where the student will publish the research. So RM, you have started the briefly the student journals, the resident researcher, the, even that's not the resident research journal in America neither the student journal and faculty journal separately. And now lastly, we are working on the international journal. And I have wrote many times to the people, but unfortunately could it get the, the uh, you know, editorial board from America. So this is the next assignment to you that if you become the chief editor of the international journal of Rawalpindi Medical University, where will the 70% board will be on your side and 30% uh, will be from our side. We will have impact journal first time in Pakistan, Garda, International research journal. So this is the assignment also. So you can't we can leave you free. Okay. The rest of the system, I think Babar will explain what we've done. The research unit in RMU. Uh, I'm not sure the uh, you met any any student of uh, RMC in last five six years, and he any difficulty because there is a post of research professor of research where a student can go. There is a student research forum. There is a student journal, and I personally look after all these things. If you go to the website, you will find all this. I will post. So I think uh, I think Professor Umar is having little difficulty. So Shahid, go ahead. Your hand is up. Yes. Yeah. Thank you, Babur. Um, yeah, I think um, um, what message uh, I get, uh, even Dr. Umar wants to obviously talk more, that there should be a follow-up meeting with Dr. Faz, uh, with, of course, uh, Dr. Umar uh, for RMU and... And, and overall Pakistan, um, how, how we can um, get a better organized. But what message I'm getting from Dr. Faz is that he needs help in, the, in, in what he started. The structure is limited in, in, and the demand is more. So I think we as Apna Merit uh, and Danish obviously uh, in his leadership, uh, we already have a research committee but within the research committee, we have made um, subcommittees. So I think Danish, my suggestion would be that Dr. Faz should lead a subcommittee of a um, you know research mentorship or research program development. Because I think, in my opinion, we need more programs like what uh, what Dr. Faz started in different places. And so I volunteer my 
office and my setup to replicate or, or to have the guidance of Dr. Pass to set up something for neurology. And, and uh, Dr. Uh, Danish is also president of PINS, Pakistan International Neurology Society. So if the people who, who are coming for neurology and wants to do neurology, I can have them uh, not only have some rotations, but do this kind of research, which exactly those people need in their journey. So uh, I think we, ne we need to replicate under Dr. Paz's leadership more structure and, and uh, increase its capacity so that we can help more students in Pakistan and coming out of Pakistan. Thank you. Thank you, Shahid. So I see that uh, Dr. Suri is there, uh, Umar Haider is there. Do you have a question or a comment before we go to Danish? Um, I have uh, just a comment that uh, it's an amazing effort that uh, Dr. Faiz is doing. And I think it's, um, as uh, already pointed out by Dr. Shahid and Dr. Umar, is that to, to how we can extend this to other sites. And um, I feel like uh, working with Dr. Faiz and in, in the committee that's already, subcommittee that's already established by Dr. Danish for uh, by Apna Merit. So uh, I think we'll be able to bring some uh, nicer change and improvement. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Heather, you have a comment? We have a few minutes. Okay, so Danish, maybe if you want to close the session with your comments, questions. Yeah, I think so. You know, your topic is I guess by questions, so Beshumar and Rate Jayenge, and we recognize many of the things that are being asked. We recognize that you know we need this in other subspecialties. We need it in family medicine, in neurology, cardiology, because just ne just field me apply karna hai residency ke liye usko apni relevant research bhi chahiye aur usko neurology ki research chahiye uh, dr faiz ne jo cheeze identify ki hai i uh, i agree with all of them uh, we are working behind the scene uh, organizations jitni badi hoti jati hain utni slow hoti jati hain slow move karti hain lekin unka inertia bahut hota hai ek dafa wo momentum pakad le to wo fir badi dur tak baat jati hai so ummeed to yahi hai ki hum um, slow hi sahi lekin ek dafa agar humne ek structure bana liya or hum faculty ko isme le aaye then it will become uh, really big and large uh, kind of a replication of what uh, fais have been doing under the leadership of fais of course so i think what we are trying to do is to uh, copy the structure that fais had build that structure structure within apna merit kyunki dr fais ne to khud apne personal time pe wo us coordination bhi ki har cheez ki but i think we need to take that away from um, burden on faculty and then we will start um, recruiting the faculty once we have that structure in place we're already working on uh, announcement for flyers to recruit faculty we already have a list of 340 faculty who have signed up on apna merit in the past we're also working on a small brief um, uh, recruitment survey jaise dr faiz ne enlist kiye the kuch criteria jo hum rakhna chahte hain to enhance the quality of our faculty so those things are uh, going on behind the scene and maybe dr babar aapki jo winter conference hogi merit ke usme hum isko ek formal announce bhi kar dein if hamare wahan pe ek robust structure us waqt tak ban chuka ho to provide a, provide a platform for for more of this yeah i think that's a good idea because uh in in december in winter meeting which is mostly merit meeting will be on 22nd of december before and after there will be other sessions through apna so i think we will announce that and by then we probably be little more organized usme ke hum usme logon ko fir guide kar sakte hain um other than that uh, obviously we are all helping on our own level and some of us are more organized like five some are not but we'll get his guidance um I think if we have no more questions or comments by the panelists, then uh, I usually specialize in finishing the meetings on time. So it's now 1 p.m. Everybody enjoy the weekend and thank you, Dr. Fais, and thank you, everybody else. I, I just want to make a comment. Yes, please. I just want to thank Dr. Omar. And I worked with Dr. Omar as a trainee for four years and have more than 10 papers uh, with him. So all this end product, which you guys are seeing, you know now who is the mentor behind my training. And I give full credit to Dr. Umar for that. And I can also tell, I work with all the students from medical colleges uh, going back from Karachi to Peshawar and Sawat. And I can tell you 
RMU students, uh, they are in, in terms of research and support they're getting, they're getting significantly higher support from their faculty and from the university. So we need to probably learn from the model which is working for RMU and, and bring it to the other universities and colleges as well. So thank you for the opportunity one more time. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Faiz. Danish, obviously, give, bringing us to this platform. Uh, you are making us smarter and smarter every day. So thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you.